All right, we're going to take a look at the cloth modifier. We're going to start off by placing a box on our scene. And we're simply going to just take a plane and we're going to create a cloth out of this plane and have it drape over our box. So I want to raise our plane above our box and I want to make sure that our plane has several segments, both the length and the width, because that's going to affect how our cloth looks in the end. So once we've got our plane, what we want to do is we want to go over to the modifiers list and we want to click on cloth. And once we've done that, we've got several options here. The first thing we want to do is we want to go to object properties. Now what that's going to allow us to do is this going to allow us to tell Max what our cloth is and what we want to affect our cloth. So our plane we want to set to be our cloth and um, it works out better if you select some of these pre-made settings. So we'll, we'll start with cotton. And we also want to add an object which is our box. Now our box is going to be a collision object. So the plane is going to be the cloth. The box is going to be a collision object. If you, you've got to be careful with this because if you notice when I clicked on those things I had to reset them again. Make sure everything's the same. Click OK. Now at this point our cloth or excuse me, our plane is actually a cloth, so to, in order to see what's going on, if we click on simulate local and let it do its thing, you can see that the the plane is falling and it's fixing to hit our box here. And as it goes around our box, it does cut it because we've got some sharp corners here, which we can fix later. and we'll turn simulate local off and all in all we see we got a cloth now that'll work great if if it hadn't cut this in the box you can actually just delete the box and you can see you would have a cloth wrapped around something so if, if this was a table or something like that we could actually dra drape a plane over the table and have it as a tablecloth or something like that So we want to erase the simulation and we want to set initial state of our, excuse me, erase the simulation of the plane and set initial state, reset state of our plane. And that just took all the simulation off. So what we want to do is we want to add some polys to our box, or add some segments here, and that'll help some with the cutting. And we could also uh, chamfer this box, round the corners off, things like that. So we'll step back up to the cloth. Now I'm going to set our end frame to 50. And we'll do simulate local again. And you can see now we have a lot less cutting of the box, although it still is cutting it a little bit around the edges here. But that's significantly better than it was. All right, so we're going to use this in another situation. What we're going to do is we're going to create a flag. So we'll start off with a cylinder to be our flag pole and then we're going to create a plane that will be our flag And again, we want to make sure that we have enough segments in this to make it look like a realistic looking cloth. If you only put a few segments in here, it'll look like it's 
it's got big creases in it and it, it really won't fold around very well. So I am going to decrease this just a little bit so that you can see what we're going to do with these vertices here in just a second. But if I was using this in a scene with just a flag and I didn't care about my polys, I would definitely have more polys in here. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that this flag is aligned with my pole. So I need to look at my orthographic views here. And once I'm confident that it's actually even a little bit inside my pole, I'm going to go ahead and apply a cloth modifier to it. And now this time, I'm going to expand this cloth out. And I'm going to select group. And what I want to do is I want to select this first row of vertices here that are touching this pole. Now what this is going to do when we get done with it is it's going to attach these vertices to the pole so that our flag doesn't just fly off when we start applying wind and things like that to it. So we want to create a, uh, a group. So we're going to click on Make Group and you can call this anything you want and then we want to select preserve and that's going to make sure that those vertices don't move so now from here we just work on the cloth just like we did before we'll go to object properties we'll go ahead and add our cylinder and um, what that'll do is when the flag comes down, if, if, if we allow it to fall down, if it hits the cylinder, it won't go through the cylinder. It'll, it's a solid piece. So we'll click on cloth for our plane. This time, let's choose, let's go with silk and cylinder collision object. And again, I'm going to make sure that everything took there. And it looks like we're okay that, with that. Now the next thing we need to do with this is we need to apply some wind to it so that our flag actually moves around a little bit. So we'll come back here to Space Warps under Forces and we'll click on Wind and when we click on Wind we'll get this square with an arrow uh, the arrow is going to indicate the direction of the wind, so we want to make sure that the direction of the wind is going the direction we want the flag. And I'm actually going to offset this just a little bit so our flag is going to be flying at a little bit of an angle. All right, once we've got that, we want to set the parameters of our wind and uh, you can experiment with this however you want and then we'll go back to our cloth and we'll go to cloth forces and when we click on that you'll see that wind 001 is here under forces and scene we want to make sure that that applies to forces and simulation so we'll just click this little arrow right here and see it moves over here and click OK all right, we're just going to look at what that, what we have here with this before we do anything else. So we're just going to click on Simulate Local. And you can see we've got that cloth on there. We can see that the wind is working and it doesn't appear to get stuck in the flagpole. So now we need to tweak it a little bit. The first thing we're going to tweak is we're going to again race simulation reset state we're going to increase this wind a little bit increase the turbulence all right the next thing we want to add to our scene back to our space warps and forces is let's go ahead and add some gravity to it I like to put this above it just so I have a reference of what's happening with my flag. So 
So we'll go back to our flag. And again, cloth forces will come over here. We'll add forces and scene gravity. Click OK. And we'll simulate local again. And this time you can see how the flag falls using that gravity. And we do have some issues here where we have some polys pulling. So we'll have to fix that. So I'm going to erase simulation, reset state. I'm going to look at my wind. I want to turn that down just a little bit. I'm going to reduce our gravity a little bit. Actually, I'm going to increase that wind a little bit. Let's see what that gets us. All right, it looks like what's happening is I'm going to change my end frame to 100. When I simulate local, I'm having this issue with the polys pulling. Um, that's not occurring when you actually simulate the flag itself and create the animation. So we're going to go back and we're going to reset the state. And instead of using simulate local for our testing, we're actually going to simulate. This will take a little bit longer because it's actually going to create the frames for the flag. You can see here it's creating the frames up to 100 and it's going to keep that animation until we erase the simulation. So the flag will actually be animated at this point so we can hit play and see what that looks like. So now at this point we can add a material to our flag. So what I'm going to do is I just pulled up the material editor. We're just going to add a flag picture to this. And we'll pull that over to our flag. And with this, you actually will probably have to do a double-sided material because you can see um, sometimes it will actually flip the flags upside down and things like that. But once you get it the way you want it, then you can simulate again. Again, I've already erased the simulation. Reset state can simulate and you end up with a flag.